it jumps, it lands, and immediately goes into like a spider crawl position. And it is like puffing its its cheeks and just breathing and like looking around and like like what's going on? Like ugh. like like I it was clear that I was not supposed to be there. It was trying to like size me up and try to figure out what to do with me because I wasn't I wasn't moving. I stood back up. I let him see me. And it was just like he was looking at me. Then he looked at the trees behind me. And as soon as I break eye contact with him, he looks at me again and he starts with his long arms, he starts to pull himself through. He starts moving. I was like, no, don't do it. And he looks again and he like slinks in there. You can hear him just like crashing. And I could see his arms grabbing like branches, just crashing through the woods. And I was like, all right, I'm going. I was like, I'm going. Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. I'm heading out on a Bigfoot expedition soon with Tate Hieronymus and others, and I want to take a few minutes to thank those who have bought me a coffee to help me go on that expedition. Thank you to Brian Corbin for buying five coffees. He says, keep the great content coming. I sure will, friend. Thank you to Michelle Almager for buying three coffees, and her message is, get there. I plan to very soon. You'll be hearing all about it. Special thank you to an old friend, Rogue Spear Bastage, for buying a coffee to help out. Thank you, Rogue Spear. And a thank you to Andrew Spalding for buying a coffee as well. He says, love the podcast. Well, I'm glad you do, and I hope you continue to listen, friend. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. And Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, thanks for coming back for another episode. Got the privilege of talking to a new friend, Josh, today. Uh, Josh contacted me over the internet, and he said he had some interesting stories to share about uh, Bigfoot from his time growing up in Alaska. So how's it going tonight, Josh? Oh, it's going great. Uh beautiful day you know can't complain about that oh absolutely it is you know we had some storms roll through here but now the grass is growing everything's nice and lush and we are loving it so uh same same out where you're at or well i mean the the weather's been nice it's like it gets really like really hot and dry out here in the summertime and the winter it's real like a mild rainy kind of easy winter so I, I can't complain about that but um yeah a little it's been it's a bit of like because like how i grew up in alaska and like the experiences that i had previously like i'm most slightly more aware of my surroundings and like i've noticed it's a little bit squatchy out here too like a little a little off-putting like to say the least um especially like um because i, I still like to hunt and I'm, i've been drawing i drew a couple of great tags and you know uh i had like you know on our way back from the beach out here in oregon uh I, the, the highway c- cuts across where my my tag was supposed to be and i'm like just keeping an eye out just to, just to sort of like size it up because you know i don't i don't like to just you know willy-nilly i'll wander into the woods unless i know it's it it's it's okay you know and lo and behold like just along the, the road a big uh big hairy parallels come stepping out of the woods and stop at a little like rock outcropping right at the edge of the highway so i'm passing by i'm like i gotta change my tag <laughs> and um that that that's what the for the most part it's been like out here when, when you notice like the little the little things the subtle things 
that people might not like pay attention to because they got their lives and all that stuff. But there, there is a lot that goes a lot goes on in like the woods surrounding like just about anywhere I've noticed. Um, sometimes like animal noises and stuff. You know, you got your standard like deer and like you know maybe a raccoon here and there, but like sometimes there's stuff that's out of place and it sounds big and it doesn't it doesn't sound correct like it sounds out of place and um it's been like an actual struggle to like say like go camping or anything like that just because i'm aware of it all it, have you ever do you experience that or have you ever experienced that so josh and, and longtime listeners of the show could probably tell the story a, a little bit as well, but uh, so I've experienced, I would say maybe more class B type things mm -hmm. in, in Iowa, you know, when we went out uh, last year, Tate and myself and, um, you know, I experienced a tree being pushed over in the woods in front of us, wood knocks captured oh, yeah. at night. And then my tent was unzipped at three forty five AM on a Sunday night when we were out in the woods that, that still messes with me today. I've not really gotten over that. And we are going back out there and listeners can watch Sasquatch, a search for Sabe Tate's documentary, the Iowa episode. You can find out more about that. Um, so I've not yet heard a vocalization or actually seen uh, a Bigfoot, Josh, but I am getting closer, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, uh, if you ever like, if you say go on YouTube or something, look up, uh, what the, what, uh, a caribou's grunt sounds like. And it, it's like a certain kind of like, like a, like a, like a grunt, like almost like, I've heard other other people you've had on a show mention like a like a like a like a grunty piggy sound, uh, like a huff, and then like a like a like a nasally like sort of like a deer will give a, will give like a, a certain kind of grunt. A caribou is much heavier and like they got bigger lungs, and so it's much much louder. And my what I've noticed is like if if they're if they're safe they when I've been in a hunting in Alaska for caribou, I thought that was a great sound at first, but then I was like, you know, I'm I'm sleeping on the side of the road. They're I'm not even up in the mountains yet. I'm about to like hit the trail in the morning and I I've already got like a, a caribou next to my tent. I'm, I'm like I'm like looking at my rival. Okay, I guess I'm getting up. It's my lucky day. And then all of a sudden I hear a, you know, a big, like heavy, like, like, um, uh, like, and then like, and then like, they, they're just, it's gone. By the time I'm unzipping, it's like nothing was there. I'm like a caribou would just hang around and it, there was nothing, you know? And like, this thing was like sniffing and grunting around the tent. And I'm like, I'm like, is it a bear? Is it a caribou? I hope it's not a moose. You know, it, it, it's uh, it's the stuff like that where you can't see directly what you're what you're dealing with, and there's like a handful of things. And in the back of my mind, I try not to think about it. It's like it could be a squatch just like checking me out, and like I just felt funny. Like when I uh, actually dealt with that, like it was a little terrifying you know because like you don't you don't know until you know and then you you got to get out and face the music and, and just see what's going on and um it's a little crazy yeah i can understand i can feel you like if a zipper though a zipper that's that's like way beyond like you know yeah it's like it's like your 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 safety bubble is like that thin vinyl like wall of the tent and like like a zipper is like the one thing that animals can't really figure out but then something's like like oh my gosh not cool like, i don't know if i've been yeah josh when you heard what 
whatever it is you heard in that tent and you heard it, that huff noise outside, did you hear actual, yeah. like, do you think it, was it something running away? Can you remember like yeah, you what can, that sounded like? It, it sounded like, um, it was like, you could hear it's, it's footsteps. It was like, a, a lot of the roads are, are like gravel out in the, the back parts of Alaska. And so when something's stepping out there, it's, it's going to be make that crinkly noise, but, the crinkly noise it made was kind of soft and that that's what i've noticed it's very it was very soft like a caribou it's going to be a hoof and it's going to have like a a really pronounced like like step sound to it. it didn't have that but it only had maybe i could hear it circling and then when i started to unzip the tent they gave the the huff and then i could hear it like maybe like three or four steps and it was it was like moving away and so then i got out and it was already gone like in into the brush um and that that now looking back that stuff so i was like that's way squatchy that's very squatchy and um that that's just like you know the the like the the like like the not confirmed sighting kind of just i heard something funny kind of thing but then like the the reals the real stuff happened when i was a kid like uh, the worst of it um let me get into that part yet uh, real so real quick there's probably some people that are curious can you share anything about where that area was where you had that tent <laughs> encounter yeah okay if you if you go past willow up into up the the highway there there's a there's a place called um montana creek and i know that the the bears go there during the the silver salmon run to get the salmon and up in the mountains there the caribou will be coming through to feed and the berries are usually starting to ripen and but you can it is just north of um hatcher pass it's it's just like pretty much on a map you could see it's like kitty corner to to uh, close to where i grew up and had my my previous encounters but um if you just go on like google earth or something you can find it um just type in montana creek and it should just take you there um most of the stuff that i experienced was just around those the talkeetna mountains there um the uh but later on i guess i'll, I'll just jump into that story with the tent the the after i experienced that i decided uh i'm i'm not gonna i'm not sleeping anymore so i packed up the tent and i decided to uh just push on and just get out of the area and so i packed up my little one man uh tent and i uh just hopped it down the road i had my uncle drop me off there because i thought that's where the trailhead was turns out it was like another five miles down the road so i had like quite a hike to get just to the just to the trail just so i could get up the mountain my my main focus at that that exact moment was like to get into the high ground because the, I knew the bears were feeding on fish and they're going to be in the low ground. And so I just decided after that, I was like, I was out of there because I, I didn't want to contend with the bear. I was just, I just wanted to get my, get my uh, bag and, and, and go, you know? So I, I start hiking up, up the mountain, get to the trailhead, Montana Creek, start heading up there. There's like a, like a, a like a four wheeler trail that goes all the way up into the mountains, and it, and it just hugs the the canyon to the Montana Creek below. And there's like waterfalls and all that stuff, and big timber and look. Um, I hiked for all morning. Like I I got up probably about four in the morning. Hiked to got to the trailhead about five thirty in the morning. And then I just started walking up. So right around eleven o'clock, eleven thirty, 
in the afternoon. I'm like, you know, really starting to huff it and I'm getting into the berries. I'm like feeling better about everything. And I'm starting to see big rocks and all this stuff and the a less sign of bear and it's just looking a little a little a little better for me. So I'm like taking breaks and working my way up. And right right when I start to get to this bend in the trail where I can't quite see around the corner, uh I just hear oh, this like a, a ferocious like roar, like a like a roar, and like hush, and a big like huff, and then like uh, a boulder the size of a basketball went like like just just over my shoulder, like I almost got clobbered by this big rock, like a big granite boulder, and I could not see what did that, like. Cause like I've never had that happen to me. I like stopped, saw the thing and I ran up just, just to peek up the, the corner and the thing had already like douche, 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 douche. And I saw like the branches on the trees above the trail that are like rustling because it just like had just smacked through and it sounded huge and about as big as a, a grizzly would be. So whatever it was, I'm, I'm like looking back. I'm like that was another experience, and that's like two, two in like a two in the morning. That's that's crazy. Uh, and so it was big enough. I had a thirty out six rifle with me. It was big enough to where I was like looking down at it. I was like, this is a pea shooter. Like I don't, I I don't need to be going up here. So I immediately did an about face and just like walked back down the trail, called up my uncle and like had him pick me up and all that stuff. But if you're looking for a little excitement, go to Montana Creek. So there you go, listeners. And it it sounds like you could be taking your life into your hands. Whenever you're doing Alaska stuff, you need to be well prepared, even probably beyond prepared is my guess. I've yeah. never been up there personally, but from what I've seen and heard, uh, it is a extremely wild place and you really only get a chance or maybe two chances when you're out there. So, yeah, my, on my way up, I, my uncle said, I think you made the right decision. He he said that there's been a, there's been four or five hunters that have disappeared up there. And I'm like, after the fact, I'm like, oh, that made me feel so sick. I was like, all right, let's just get out of here. And um, it, it just sort of put things in perspective when it comes to hunting. Like, it, you really do have to, like, look at the little things like, is there a lot of, do people pull a lot of animals out of there? Or do they pull very little? And why are they pulling very little? Are, is there something else eating the animals besides uh, besides just like wolves and bears? Because there can't be that many wolves and bears eating all the deer, especially if surrounding areas have like say 1,500 deer come out maybe five miles down the road in either direction. Yeah, this one only pulls out like 12. And then you see a pair of hairy legs and you know what's up. You can't be going in there. Uh, and you just, you got to just be aware, more aware than uh, the normal. It, it's um, camping is stressful. I thought it would relax me and stuff, but it's like it can be stressful. And just in that way, once you know what's actually out there and it's like just cruising around, it it, it takes on a whole other level. It's like it's becomes way more real. And I've I've become accustomed to just camping in really crowded family uh, camp campsites now, where like there's too many people for there to be trouble, you know. Mm, okay, interesting. So you have you stick to the groups for safety. Yeah. Um, it's it seems it works okay, but even still, you know, you got that in the back of your mind all the time like thinking about like 
is it safe? Because I, like, do these people, like, because I know none of them are looking out for that sort of stuff. They're just playing, having a grand time, but they're making lots of noise. And I like when people are making lots of noise. Mm. That's the best thing. Have Have you heard of any other encounters happening in that Montana Creek area? Have you ever looked into that? Just curious. Um. I haven't heard of anything. The only thing I heard was what my uncle told me was that um, people have ended up missing up that very trail. So, but, but uh, I do know that like farther south, uh, I just like looked into like what's going on in the mountains and like as, as I understand it, this is all secondhand. I haven't like directly like asked any of the local natives like if this is a true thing but apparently the the willow side of hatcher pass is like they stayed out of that area because it was designated for the the the, the wild people the, the sasquatch out there um and where i grew up was just south of that and uh down in the so just a little farther south you got hatcher pass it comes out to willow and just over that mountain is like government peak and then it like slopes down and then you were at the matanuska valley you got fish hook road the little susitna uh, the little susitna rivers coming out of the mountains you got like a string of lakes and like it it was like just about endless forest all the way up to the mountains and it since then it, it's like they've a, a bunch of developers have come through and like just put in like like a hundred houses in there and, um but before that when i when i was there it was it was just like raw wilderness and it was like on the back side of a military reservation that like so nobody went went in there you know um the house i grew up in was like just um just across the street from this this wilderness and so there was little creek in there and there was like a few lakes that they were all connected to and like it was like a blast you know you you just look forward to just like going with your friends and just like cutting into the woods and like splashing around and you know wrestling and whatever you know boy stuff um but at times like uh one one day like the my brother and i went out to the back side of the lake and we had never actually been out there before but it was like this little meadow that had grown in uh, off of this little marsh and we, we decided to just like slink in there and just check it out and it was just me and my little brother we weren't very big like i think i was like maybe 10 he was like seven or eight uh you know just you know playing with stuff picking things up and looking at things i think he was tying his shoe and squats down and i look over and in the tree line this was like the very first first time we saw something there was like oh, just a huge uh, sasquatch like in in the tree line sort of like his hands on like the highest branches and he's just watching us but he's like rocking from side to side and that's once he realizes we we saw him he looked down and away and he just sort of slinked and disappeared he got real low super low and like kind of like disappeared into the brush and my brother was like we need to get out of here and i was like okay and just the fact that like i know people have mentioned that they have like a like a silvery shimmer to some of their fur what i've noticed about them is like they have um an undercoat of like denser fur but then there's like these like like uh a much lighter, wispier, uh, longer 
coat on top of that. So that's like a more like um sort of like two layers of fur. Uh, the the upper layer is more like a it picks up the light, and when you're like say if it's like at when the sun's starting to set and the dew starts coming in, it's harder to pick them up. They sort of blend in with like the mist a little more. Uh, but like because the sun was still out, I was able to pick up the the red in his fur, his under fur. And it just silhouetted him enough for us to pick it up and just notice him. And that was like the very first time. And so that we never went back to that area, at least for a few years. Um, but that that following winter, we hadn't mentioned it to anybody. That following winter, we were um, we found this little closer to home we found a, a nice little like gentle sloping hill and we wanted to go sledding so we went with our friends went sledding down this hill we get that we get out there and we notice these these tracks these big tracks and like either it's a bear or a moose and my brother and i both knew it was it was like probably one of those things and i said i think it's bigfoot and the friends we were with were not having that stuff there's just some people that just don't Unless it's in a zoo, it, it doesn't exist. I don't got time or any of that stuff. And he's like, I don't believe you. I don't want to hear it. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, whatever. So we dropped it. But the the trail led out from where that creek was diagonally towards the Anderson Lake, which is a, the lake we live next to. There's like three lakes there. There's Anderson Lake, Dry Lake, and then they removed the name of it i'm thinking because of like real estate reasons but it was called mud lake and then there was like a a creek network connecting all the lakes and in there it was like rainbow trout and and uh, landlocked salmon and stuff like that so plenty of food you know moose coming through there it's like a very like like in terms of like stuff to do stuff to eat it's got, it's got everything. It's bountiful. Um, but we saw that the, the tracks went from our little hill coming out of the out of the bush diagonally across the street and towards the, the other side of the lake. And I thought it was odd. I was like, why why would somebody be just walking through there? He's like, yeah, they they had snowshoes on. Let's just drop it. Blah. And you know, it stuff was like you just sort of go with it but like you know what it is right and um these guys have said hey our neighbor's having a barbecue you want to come and join us because we were going to go over there after we were sledding i was like okay it's almost time you want to take a shortcut so we took a shortcut through the woods and we get through the woods across one lake up a trail across the other lake to the back side of this guy's um, little barbecue he had. So there's already like 30 people there. They're all gathered around this big bonfire in the backyard. They're cooking hot dogs and hamburgers and all this stuff. It's middle of winter. Alaskans got a party when they got a party, I guess. But <laughs> so we, we, we show up and, they, and they're like, oh my gosh. And like the, the owner of the house is like, man, you kids are brave for coming out of there. She knew what I saw. And, and then I'm like, what'd you see? And then like some of the neighbors are like, Shh, no, 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 no. We want to give them nightmares. And we don't want to tell them. And then he started talking about how like the howls he heard at night. And and I go, I was like, what what kind of howls? It's like, I've, I've seen things. Kid, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. We Let's not talk about this. And he was getting kind of frustrated because I kept probing him. And uh, we just sort of sat there eating hot dogs by this bonfire with this guy kind of just stewing in his, his memories. And like the mood sort of went from like laughter to a little like this weird awkward silence. But he just eating quietly. And he said, like, boys, I want you to promise me you'll never go back into those woods again. I was like, okay. And of course, as kids are, we, we went right back into the woods like all the time um 
that following summer, um, my brother and I were like, it was a hot day and like we had just got done visiting family and like we were sort of over it. We wanted to go run around in the woods and mess around. And so we got to, we asked permission. They said we could go. And so we jump across the street and start heading down the hill to like the creek that's there. And there's like a couple of logs that crisscross across across it. And then it's like, it's got like a nice little deep hole where I'd love to, it was my favorite fishing spot. Like I just, I would always catch something there. And so I'm leading the way. My brother's like maybe 10 feet behind me. He's, he's on the hill, hilltop. I'm at the bottom of the hill on the log. There's a, I think this tree had fallen and uprooted a different tree and I had like lifted up the root, sort of the root mass of it. And so it was like blocking the creek. And then when I was like, got onto the log, I saw this hairy leg step into the creek and like, I'm like, uh oh, is that a bear? And like my brother froze, I froze, and like we we just heard it like darting its arms around and just like quick like a cat, you know. And then all of a sudden, you just hear, see him like lift up a a a rainbow trout, and like he's just like, and he's just like smacking on this fish, like just like gong gong, like just making just we'll just say masticating on this fish like just it sounded like loud smacking crunching like chewing on a raw fish and then he like we were sort of like trying to just like our brains are trying to wrap our heads around like what we're looking at to make sure we're we're looking at what we're looking at if it's a bear or not or if it's another one of those things we saw you know and um it stops for a second and it peeks over in the creek and i catch a flash of red eyes you know like the just a little bit and then it backs in and then it, i think it a fish bumped it and it grabbed the the fish and, it's, and it starts smacking on another one and then after it was done it stood up because it was down on a like squatting down in this creek and it had to been like it was a hole in the creek so it had been like four feet deep it it stood up and its head went way over the the root mass of this birch tree and it was like its hair was messy it wasn't bear shapes and it was like black skin like jet black black hair like straight but like kind of messy and um i could make out the because it had splashed water all over its face, it was picking up some of the light. And the, the sun was starting to set a little bit, so it was a little dark in the in that depression where the creek was at. But I could make out, it like when it was looking at us, we were looking at him. And my brother was looking at me, and I looked at him, and he was looking for cues. It's like, are we supposed to be running, you know? But I'm, like, just mesmerized by this thing, like, just it puts out its hands and it moves the branch out of the way so it could get a better look at me. And there's just like a little like birch branch. It just like huge long black fingers with a hair on top of the, the, on top of the hand, just like, just like gently like moves the branch out of the way. And I'm just getting a full glimpse of this guy's head and it, and it's, the the pupils were dilated so big it was like about the size of like a nickel like on each side so it was it couldn't have been a person it had to be one of those things right and it's like the hair is just crazy and it's looking and i'm catching the light and i'm catching like the the finer details like the the nose like had really flared nostrils and uh i almost thought it was a bear for a second because the nostrils were so flared but the they had like a bridge, a wide bridge on the nose and like the hairs on the on the cheek, which is it was like a human face. Uh, but just below like the cheekbone, 
the the hairs came out to a point up to the the nose and that they were like a lot looser but more wiry straight uh and like with like a little bit of like you know a little bit of water dripping off of them just a little bit but like it really like the moisture really picked up on the skin and was able to really see the the gauntness of like the the cheeks those really lean like cheeks they didn't have any he didn't have any fat on him he was he, i guess he was hungry but um at that moment it was like okay even if it's not a bear we shouldn't be here and my brother's like we got to get out of here <laughs> i was like i looked at run and so we start running up the up the hill and that thing starts running too it runs in the opposite direction so it's like splashing through the creek it gets onto the grass and then it gets super low. It's like doing a spider crawl. And I could, and like I get up to the top of the hill. It's only maybe like 30 yards, right? So it's not very far off the road. I stopped to look and to see it. Like I want to make sure I can see it as it was like coming out where it went. If I'm ever going in these woods again, I wanted to see where that thing was going. And it, and I got to see it, like how it moved through. And it was like it's such such a long reach with the with the arms, and it was just using the trees and the saplings to sort of pull itself through un, the underbrush. It pulled its massive body underneath, like a, this this nasty um, spruce tree, like a dried out spruce tree. I had tried to claw, cross that thing once or twice, and I, I like just get my shins all tore up, and I, I just stay off of that thing. That thing just busted through that, just swimming just swimming through the brush and then it gets to the opposite bank and up next to the road and it climbs out and it is like massive it's tall hairy like the whole thing was like it was just like head to toe hair and not long hair just really frizzy like short hair maybe three inches uh for the most part the longest part hair on the body was on the shoulders and on the the top of the hands a little bit up the forearms the backside like his his glutes his little buns they were like massive actually they were, and they were like covered in a consistent hair and like he's just like one two like bounds and he's up this embankment and he's looking back at us and he just gets those Arf. It just gives like a that grunt, that, that keep away grunt. And he gives like about three of them. And he's like already running with his huge arms, like just long arms. And like what was incredible is like I could see how his shoulders, because he was like slightly slouching, his shoulders were really droopy, really droopy, but they were super broad. And how he ran was like his body sort of narrowed and it really like slimmed down his profile when he was running because the the mechanic i don't know it's like his arms are swinging at an angle in front of him and his legs were like like crisscrossing in front of itself uh and like he was like had to have been like like 50 about 50 yards within like um six or seven steps like it was just like he was he was like leap running essentially he's like douche douche and he just gives out this ferocious howl he's like Whoa! and like he just cuts into the woods right where we saw those tracks previously and so i knew that that that's that was a big foot and that was like right where we we were playing and like like there there was no mistaking it and like the whole time i'm looking at this my brother is like yanking on me we gotta go we gotta go and i'm like looks like focused on it and like i snap out of it we run inside i you know i tell the family they're like there's a debate I'm like no they're only down south i heard and like my dad's like i've never seen anything or any of that he actually worked up in the gold mines up in the Talkeetna mountains and so he's been up in hatcher pass and all that stuff and so he's been up in and around the, the whole area for for 
decades before we came to him with this little story. So he didn't believe us one bit. And it was just like, we. he just said, well, whatever it is, it ran away. It's not going to come back. And so I trusted him enough to just say, okay, he did, it did run away. So that was going to be it. Like I wasn't going to see anything about it. So then I sort of put it in the back of my mind. And eventually, you know, you sort of forget about it a little bit. You move on with your life. Um, and that part was sort of left me with like, you know, you have the occasional nightmare here and there, but, um, you know, you, you always got to check, you know, like you always look over your shoulder. What year about did that happen? This was probably, I would say this was about, I would say 1990 or 1991. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you're about what age again? Oh, I am uh, 43 now. I'm about to be 44. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. The, um, I think um, a little while, like a few years later, uh, I'm, you know, I worked up the courage to, to still go into the woods and all that stuff. And like our friends, we all would go mess around in those woods even after all of that stuff we're still bored i guess um um i would uh, often take uh this trail that went between the the two lakes and it went diagonally towards a uh, wolf lake and that's a, a an old uh, military reservation that sort of like is like butted up against the the Talkeetna Mountains and into right at the bit in the opening of Hatcher Pass and all that stuff. But um, what was I would often go up there, take my dog or whatever, and go like grouse hunting with like a, a little twenty two. I did it all the time, and uh, sometimes like this this time that I went. I ended up uh, leaving my dog behind because I just didn't want him barking. I just wanted him to like get the jump on the birds and, you know, come home and everything. And like the dog got excited a lot and he didn't like guns. And it, it was just, a, it was always a hassle. So I left the dog. And uh, as I, this, this trail like cuts straight through the woods for a good ways for a couple miles. And then it opens up to this clearing where I think they were like had for whatever reason like cut out a whole swaths of trees like for whatever reason they had um but like every time I passed this spot it I was like I noticed that the mountain looked really close I was like wondering if I could walk up and like actually get to that mountain and like decided you know what today is the day i'm gonna do it uh and so you know i'm i got my like i'm looking around making sure the coast is clear for me to just go off trail because it it was so clear and it was, you could see so far and it just seemed like such an easy little hike to like poke around and explore so i decided to do it i get to about two and a half three miles in I get really, I start to notice like the mountain's getting pretty close, but it's still really far away. And maybe I ought to just turn back. I had gotten to a lake and I was tired and I was like, it's, this is good enough. This is neat, but I, I, should, I should get back. And uh, I turn around, I'm like right next to this cluster of trees. Um, and I can, it thins out at the point and there's like another cluster of trees, like, a little farther out and like then this like huge like clearing like a huge field and like i look over and i it was sees what seems like a a guy in a hooded jacket just sort of walking like a lanky looking guy just walking through the field and i, I in alaska in general like if you're out in the bush at any point like there's a possibility you might run into a trapper because like they did they did 
to do like work the creek systems and like they'll, they'll go up along the mountains and like the back country and like they'll they'll set some lines every now and then uh and so i assume that's what it was just a just a trapper or some guy hiking around so this guy he's he's walking like like he's really just like swinging his arms like he's really tired he looks a little slouchy and then but i can't quite make it out because like the the moisture off of the grass and the sunlight was creating sort of like a mirage effect and so it was distorting what i was seeing so i couldn't quite make out the silhouette until he got really close and i realized it wasn't the guy it was another one of the it was another sasquatch and like it's walking right at me and i'm like it doesn't see me because I'm just just out of line of sight behind this cluster of trees. And I'm looking. And it's like if I try to go that way, he's gonna see me, and he might try to follow me home. And I didn't want that either. And so I just sort of hung back, uh, and waited. And I just had to really think. And I looked around, make sure nobody else, none of the others were on me or something, or if I wasn't getting surrounded in any way. And it looked like it was just just a alone one just walking through and i didn't want to like be too aggressive or, or anything like that I, I just realized like i just have to be really calm and cool it's like it's like you know you, you run into it like a bear you go bear rules you just be real calm have a real like stern voice and just look big and that's all i could do because all i had on me was like a little 22 rifle is a little one of the apache i think it was a remington apache but i only had like three or four rounds left from like like missing shots and so i didn't i had no way to defend myself really i was really flapping in the wind uh and i'm just like sort of make a decision to just just hang back a second and just see where this thing goes and and i might not have to deal with it and I decided to like what my dad taught me was like when we were tracking caribou, you can go up to the herd and if you just like slowly squat down, they won't like see you right away and they'll think you're part of the terrain. And so I did that. And because like they're not a prey animal, they he he saw me. He saw me do this move. And then he immediately stops, looks. And he just starts like makes a straight beeline straight for me, and he's running. And like this, he's covering ground like crazy. I, like I, like it looked like a football player, like just rushing me. And then all of a sudden, it's it gives like a a bound and a bound, and then it leaps. Um, it did like a long jump essentially, but like farther than like your like a normal long jump it was like it must have been like twice as twice the distance but like it jumps it lands and immediately goes into like a spider crawl position and it is like puffing its its cheeks and just breathing and like looking around and like like what's going on like ugh. like like i it was clear that i was not supposed to be there and it was it was trying to like size me up and try to figure out what to do with me because I wasn't, I wasn't moving. I stood back up. I let him see me. And it was just like, he was looking at me. Then he looked at the trees behind me and then he's looking at me. Like he looks at the trees behind me. I look over and I see and as soon as I break eye contact with him, he looks at me again and he starts with his long arms. He starts to pull himself through. He starts moving. I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And he looks again and he like slinks in there. You can hear him just like crashing. And I could see his arms grabbing like branches as he's like pulling and like sort of like swinging through and then like just crashing through the woods. And I was like, all right, I'm going. I said, I'm going. And I start walking. I don't, I don't run, but I'm like walking briskly to the, to the other uh, cluster of woods. And as soon as I get to the next cluster of woods, I, I start running. And so 
as soon as I get out the clearing of this cluster of woods, he's already running up to the next cluster of woods in front of me. He's already ready to intercept me. Like he had beat me to like the next field over. And it was just, I, I was thinking he was just so like messing around about to come out of the bush or out of those trees behind me and start chasing me that way. But he didn't. He backtracked. He went all the way around and like caught up with me and he was ready. He was looking and he yanked a tree. He yanked a tree clean down. He just broke the branch right off. He's like rocking and he's just like trying to just keep his, I guess, keep his composure. But he's like rocking and he's like getting real huffy. And I'm just like walking again. I'm like looking at him, making eye contact. He's looking at me and then he looks over again and I see what he's going to do. And like, there's a choke point where there's a cluster of trees on the left and the one he was at was on the right. And there was like this thin point where they come together is about 15 feet separation between the two. And I had to go through that. And so I start walking as fast, briskly as fast as I can. And he darts into the woods and you can hear him just like crashing through and about midway he pops his head up and it's um and then he pops it back down and i i get through past the the choke point and i can hear him crashing behind me and i i'm looking over my shoulder at him to see what what's about to happen and like he gets within like 10 feet of me and he just stops it goes dead silent just dead silent and i'm like thinking i'm about to die or get ripped apart or whatever and like he was on me and he just stopped and i just kept walking and walking and there was another big cluster and all of a sudden i hear him they come out and he's running to the next cluster of trees but this one's much bigger um and i get in there and it's like a longer stretch and there's like a, a little like clearing inside that cluster of trees and he's right there right in the middle of it and there's like trees like snapped over and bent and like something's been thrashing well obviously it's been thrashing around in there and that's that was his little spot and i'm walking through essentially his living room and he's like hanging on there and like he's like just chomping his teeth and like i can't see the top teeth but his bottom teeth were, were sticking out a little bit and he's just like looking at me and i i'm trying to maintain eye contact with him and just be as assert assertive as possible and it, it broke eye contact with me and i looked down and it's still like puffing itself up but it's not making like it's like retreating its eye contact with me and like looking back i'm like i shouldn't have been doing that i shouldn't have been like making like direct eye contact like that but it happened to work in that situation but uh most primates it's like a a challenge and, and usually that, that means you're you're behind you know uh but as i as i pass through he's just sort of like rocking back and forth and i pass through and there's a clearing just the field and i can see the trail and i get to the trail and i'm like about to hyperventilate and i'm like but i have to like run it's time to run and like i'm breathing i got my hands on my knees and i can i'm looking down and i'm seeing like scattered bone piles of like like moose that have been like killed like previous summers like there was a lot of bones and i'm just standing on top of this kill these multiple kill piles and i'm like i really have to get out of there so i ran the hardest i ever ran in my life down that trail and uh got through and like never mentioned it to anybody and like i don't know it just um i think i com compartmentalized the whole situation because i remember going there but i didn't but it was always like broken up memories and i never really made the connection of what, what had happened i like i think i like, blacked it out and uh i only remembered it until like um like last month when my wife had, was talking to me and we were driving the car and there was like the background of the light and like something something about the situation just like like 
created a snowball effect where I started remembering stuff. And then like all of a sudden I'm like really like piecing things together. And it, it just like all just like, like hit me. Like I experienced this part and like I didn't have any recollection up until just then of this part that that, that happened because like I remembered walking through the woods and like all this stuff but like the the most intense part was like the the close up when when I was in that clearing where he was like making eye contact with me he couldn't have been more than like 20 20 feet away and like the the light was like dappled and you know you could see like his his whole like fur pattern was crazy he he had like um like a blonde patch on the front side of his around like the brim of his like face his um the skin on his face was was a splotchy and like freckly kind of the the hair was like a like a rich red there the the head came up to a point you know the classic sasquatch look but like uh, a lot of what I've seen in the, like a lot of the drawings, this guy didn't have. It was more like lanky, uh, just so muscular, but like elongated muscles. You know, like a, like a like a like a long tube. Like the, you could see the muscles were there, but it wasn't like big bulgy muscles. They were just strong, long muscles, and like his reach was crazy um that that guy i I believe he was probably like about nine or ten feet tall uh but the that that was that was um that was probably the most intense moment i mean of my life but um it uh it had left me with like I'd always often have like these these nightmares of like Bigfoot coming to get me. I didn't understand why until it was like I had like started piecing things together, and it and it really is shocking like how much my brain had like compartmentalized everything about it. And um, yeah, I I don't know. It's just uh. with the with a lot of this stuff it 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 always kept a, a level of anxiety you know every time you go camping anytime you go out there's always like they they might be out there they might be just right next to you you know and it's it's it's, it's unsettling because it's if they if they wanted to they like you couldn't there's nothing you could do to like really stop them and uh but like the the personality, it's like there was a difference in personality, I would say, between the two. Like the the, the black the black skinned one, the black furred one was very like very aloof, very um shy. But this the red one with the the blonde uh patches he also had patches on his chest but like the, the patchwork on the on that one was crazy but like the personality is more more aggressive way more aggressive maybe i just surprised him and that's why he was aggressive but like it just he was very much showing himself to me and like it it seemed like two two like polar opposites in terms of like personality. Josh, thank you for I mean that that is probably the most intense encounter I've I've heard. I would say a, across the board. I mean, first off, thank you for being vulnerable enough to share that. Um yeah. that that is extremely extremely intense and no one would ever blame you for not going into the woods or camping by yourself ever like that's hands down the best reason not to i mean i totally understand how you're camping in groups now and and it sounds like you're you're working through it which is which is great yeah 
yeah, it's um like I, I do have to like remember that like as much as like there's like an anxiety about like like not wanting to do things, I have to do things for my daughter in order for her to like really grow up and like be like 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 a happy healthy person you know and like and sometimes you just gotta bite the big one and just like sort of deal with it and uh not sort of put that 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 terror or that fear in her but just like a health a healthy respect is what, is what i'm trying to get for her but like it's it's real hard to like just like keep it together when you're like you know it's like you're just you're exposed you know absolutely when you're going through that that whole situation with the the creature chasing you thinking Mm -hmm. back to that time period if you had to say would you say you were getting more human-like characteristics or ape-like characteristics or was it something completely different than the two i would say i've 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 seen like people exhibit those 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 behaviors um but like in terms of like like a connection like we were both like i would say it's more on the human side like and just like the intelligence level was there like the the spark was there and um like the way i look at it it's like we we have all these modern conveniences we can do a lot of things because we have machines to help us do it and with them it's like none of that so you're you 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 can run faster you can leap farther you can move quicker you can grab things quicker um you can get low and you can crawl and you can climb and you can do all the things you need to survive and get up on like whatever you're trying to get. Um, and, but to do that in like a subarctic environment where the winters are so harsh, like no clothes on, but like it's crazy. But like, if you look at the fur and all that stuff, it's just, it's just, they've adapted to just being outside but they, the 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 feet and like the the hands everything is very human but the proportions are like like much taller if i were i was like looking through like um all the hominid species and like the like i would say like if i were to, to guess i would say it's somewhere between like homo habilis and homo erectus but with like the the height of like a uh, Cro-Magnon, so like you're like 10, 12 feet tall, but like still very like the face was like the the bone structure and all that stuff, and like like it did have like like ape features, but it was more human than ape. It's like just a little human. It's like just our side of uh, on the evolutionary tree. It's just but just massive like tall massive and incredibly powerful um but the but the spark of intelligence the fact that he intercepted me he knew what i was doing and we we're been caught up in this cat and mouse game of like just observing each other and trying to maintain distance and all that stuff and we're gauging each other you you can't get that with like a bear or anything like that or care but they they're, they'll run or they'll they'll charge you but this was a totally different like he could charge me but he didn't because he wanted to observe me and we we're both at this weird like standoff and it was that the but just just knowing that like there he was consciously letting me slide you know, like he he could have he could have reached out and just snatched me up in a second, like it, it. But he didn't, and so I I I think that that's that makes me feel better. Like in in some ways that that there's like a certain level of consciousness to where like 
Like they're not just killing machines. Like they're intelligent thinking creatures. Like it feels more like it, more like a person than uh than an animal. It's just like a superhuman, I guess. Wow. I I mean that that encounter alone, I think you'd be set for you know, the the rest of your life. I mean hopefully I mean, I hope that's the worst thing that you've ever gone through. Uh, that was that had to have been extremely rough. Well, I mean, I went out to out here in Oregon. The um, like after I did a little, you know, you do do your research. You start looking at things and start piecing things together, and you start to realize like how much signs you were overlooking. And then once you once once you start like. Once the veil is like like removed and you're really looking and see things for what they are. I was out in um Sun River uh just uh the previous weekend and uh I left my phone in the truck and it was pitch black out there. There's not not a lot of light out there. It's like way out in the country, it's just south of Bend. Um kind of high desert, real dry. And I figured I was like pretty sad because it seems like they like to like hang out in like wet places and the creeks and whatnot. But it, it just something about it, like that pitch black. What I did was I just gave a little like whistle just to see if anything would react. And I could hear it like something or something started moving right towards me at an angle from like 100 yards out, like in the woods stopping right before the road and then like like three or four steps was like about 30 feet like just something huge was like got to me and then it was like starting to circle around me and i said i'm not about to be like go fumbling for my phone and with the pitch black behind me with a monster in the darkness i was like all right i'll get my phone tomorrow and i i shut the blinds cut closed every single curtain in that cabin and like just like said nobody's going outside and was like bye something out there and like you know you don't you can't you can't really just like break down and explain all this stuff to somebody that's just never experienced it right and so but like after that like the during that whole week um you know like at one point we were coming home from dinner and my daughter and my wife are like adding and talking about whatever. And like in the distance, I can, I can hear something over by the river, just going like, just giving like a, like a, a gentle, like, like hoot sound. And it wasn't like a bird. It was like a primate. Right. And, but it was like, a couple of miles down the road, but like you could hear it. And like, I'm, it's like, you don't, I don't want to like just sort of spoil the fun to say, Hey daddy, here's some noises in the, in the distance. Like everybody's having a good time. I'm not going to to spoil the party, but like I went and checked out the, I, I, I like to frequent the, the Bigfoot sightings, like blotter map. I have one on my, uh, it's an arcgis.com. Oh yeah, it's um big, Bigfoot sightings and density of the US with biomes. Let's let's see. Tell you what, I'll, I'll I'll send you the link. But um I I checked the down here in Oregon, I checked the the cabin and like I'm not maybe like about a mile, mile and a half, two miles away, there was two like reported sightings just just south of the cabin. So it wasn't just like something in my head. I was just hearing things like stepping around and maybe it's just me being paranoid because I saw so much. But it was like close enough and in like there was like two sightings and they both are in line. And like 
with the cabin. So like I was clearly in the path of whatever would be coming through. And like, so it confirmed to me, like it had to be that. Like if I'm hearing the hoots and I can hear it step and it's got massive, you know how you can like with cadence, you can like, you don't have to see it, but you can hear it and you can tell that it's like, it's big. Um, um, and sort of like, I'm able to like, not seeing it, I'm tracking it through the darkness. Right. Um, but it, like, it confirmed to me that like, yeah, that, that I was right. They're out there. It's okay. And like, you know, nothing happened, but, um, you know, it's, it just, you realize like, like with all the, I've been watch. I've been listening to to your show for for a bit, and it's like there's just so many sightings, and they're all over the place. And and I I see these shows where they 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 they're going deep deep into the mountains and like getting reaction shots and like trying to like hunt down this thing. And and I don't think they they need to go that far. Like you know, a lot of people that find them are just like in their local park, like just off the trail, you know. Or like some do, some are way up in the mountains, but it's like it, it's wherever there's water and wherever there's food, they're probably there. Um, it's uh, you know, it's like so it's, it's, it's out of your control, right? So you can't you can't do anything about it, but like you know, live your life, and so. I've just been sort of like trying to use that to like comfort myself really. I've been trying to, to think in my mind of how to categorize you, Josh, because it's, it's very interesting because it's almost like, so I would say it's like you're a hunter, but you've had mm-hmm. your eyes opened and you're very aware of what really is out in the woods. I don't know. Is that, would you agree with that or. You have to be, you kind of have to be a hunter so I was like, sort of like, so like, like, you can't just like go out and looking for, for Bigfoot because you're overlooking the signs. Like you, you gotta know how to track it, like judge the wind. You gotta know where you're standing, like what's around you. And just that alone, like you should be able to like, if you hear something outside the tent, you should be able to identify what it sounds like, what it is and where it's at. And, um, if you should be asleep or if you should be like pulling the safety off and like wait for the big show, you know? Um, but, um, it's, yeah, I would say that, that that's definitely like a good way to categorize it. Um, the, the whole, the whole thing is just like, I, when I, when I look, because I grew up, caribou hunting we'd be glassing up on hills out in the tundra and like if i'm out hunting with other people from say from the lower 48 i'm i'm looking at deer that are like five miles away up on a hill hilltop and i'm able to see them move around and it's like there's a deer and they're like what are you talking about and they have to pull out the glasses and, and see it and then it's like yeah he's right holy cow um and like when you're hunting for moose they like to hide in like in the thick um, cuts of uh, like spruce, like black spruce and like they blend in really well. And so you have to like, when you're driving down the road, you have to look for tracks along the road, but you also have to look into, into the woods and you're sort of like studying as you, as you cruise by, you got to look for anything that looks out of place and like you're studying as you go. And then like after a while, like you, you do it instinctively. You don't, like when I was a kid, it was real hard. It was really taxing on the brain to do all that stuff. But after a while, it becomes second nature, and then you're just you're just seeing things. And um, and now I'm at this point, yeah, where like because I've I've been raised to hunt, I'm able to to notice more. And uh, a lot of things are overlooked that are like just right under your nose. Like you you probably had ten encounters and you didn't even know it. You know. But, um, yeah, 
it's fascinating to think about, but I, I don't think you're too far off. I mean, yeah, it's how many things are happening when we're out there in yeah. the woods. We're just not looking at the signs the right way. Totally agree. Oh, one, one trick I've, I've learned that really helps, um, is if you, you do go camping, just, um, like if don't, don't start a fire, just put your back against a tree and just sit there and just at night and just let, let everything sort of happen. And you're just quietly sitting there, letting nature walk by all the little creatures coming through. Like, is it a field mouse or is it a dump truck? You know, uh, your brain switches on and you, you notice a whole lot more after you do that. And uh, let's say the next time you do go camping, just do that. Just like sit in the darkness and like let your night vision sort of take over and just sort of listen to the sounds. And um, don't talk, just listen, listen and see, smell. And uh, your brain switches on you and like after that you can smell more you can see more you're just more aware um i think when if you if you're in a city a lot there's so much stimulation going on your brain just goes numb to everything and so you gotta stop and unlike shut down and just like sort of be present in what's happening right now That's that is fascinating to think about. I I think I will be definitely taking taking that advice. Josh, this has been a very interesting chat. And thank you for being, you know, again, vulnerable enough to yeah. share what's happened to you over the years. Uh it's incredible, yeah, incredible it's, encounters, um, man. Yeah, it's like it's still, you know, I'm still like piecing more together, but like you know, so at some point you just have to like move on and just like let it happen. You know, um, like these things happened and it's okay. And if a lot of people they're they're skeptics, they're always gonna be skeptics. They're just those people. You just like don't even spin your wheels. Like don't worry, don't waste your time on them. If they're if they're here, they're listening. They've seen it. There's enough people. Uh, eventually, the skeptics will will change their tune once some some satisfying evidence is, is presented but like there's just too too much going on for people not to like say okay there's something going on you know mm. absolutely if anything does i mean if you're fortunate to uh -huh. have additional things happen to you in the future uh please by all means uh reach out i would love to chat with you again but uh, it's been a, a really fun and enlightening time talking to you tonight, Josh. Oh yeah. I'm just glad you, you know, gave me the opportunity because like, it's not something you can just like spout off, you know? <sighs> but yeah, thank you for hearing. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all. It's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because I know you haven't been sleeping. I understand what you're going through and I appreciate every one of you listening. <laughs>